The GameCube is an awesome system, and if you're still playing it today like I am, you probably know that the only way to get 480p video out of the system is with this. These very expensive GameCube component cables. These things are rare, they go for two to three hundred dollars at least on eBay, and yeah, getting your hands on this, not the easiest. But over the past week or two, I've been testing a new product from Eon called the GCHD Mark II. It's based on the GC Video Project, and it gives you beautiful 480p output over HDMI and analog. But there's a lot more to it than just that. And to discuss it, I've brought along a good friend of mine who knows a lot about this stuff, Mark from My Life in Gaming. Mark, welcome to DF Retro. Hey, glad to be here. We're going to talk about this new Mark II today because, yeah, your name is Mark, this thing's the Mark II, it kind of makes sense? No, really. We've been testing it out, and I think we've found some interesting stuff. So, first of all, why would people want this and what does it cost? Again, the idea is you get good quality video out of your GameCube. If you're still playing on that system, this is the best way to get a nice 480p image without spending a fortune, though this is not insignificant. It still comes in at $150, but it's a lot less than you would pay for a component cable. And of course it supports analog video, but uh, there's some, some weirdness going on here with this and I, I think you might be surprised by just how much of a jump this actually is. So Mark, what have you found in your testing of this product? Well, about three years ago, I was testing some of the very earliest uh, developments from the open source GC video project. Uh, there were, mostly people were modding uh, the systems and people had ideas for external solutions, but the connector was still kind of a problem. But in terms of digital output functionality, it's pretty much the same as it was back then. Uh, it does 480p output at max, even though you intend to connect this to an HD display. Uh, 480i content is uh, line doubled in a way that people usually call it Bob de interlacing, where it kind of flickers between the two fields. It essentially makes each field look like a 240p image and then alternates. It kind of simulates the look of interlacing on a CRT. A lot of people really aren't going to like it, but I've gotten pretty used to it uh, through other retro uh, solutions. And the reason for it is just because it's fast. It's very fast. It's intended to be lag free, whether you're playing 480i content, 480p content, or, or the limited 240p content uh, that exists for the system. And of course, the, the the equivalent PAL resolutions. Yeah, and I think that's important because this is le this is leg free. I think um, it's it's at least comparable to any other solution for the system. So you're not adding extra leg to the chain by using the Mark II. So that's great. Um, and also, 480i isn't much of an issue. I suppose I you know, if you get the action replay disc as an example, and there are other ways to do this, you can actually boot custom software on the GameCube. And I think one of the most popular options for this is something called Swiss. Uh, essentially, booting a game using Swiss, not only does it allow you to get past region checks if you don't have a modded system, but it also allows you to force a video mode. So you can force 480p in games that don't normally support it. Like the original Resident Evil, for instance, I believe is one of those games that it's 480i only, but you can force it to 480p uh, using Swiss. And that means you can get proper progressive scan using the HDMI output on this device. You can also do things like forcing 16 by nine widescreen, which is kind of cool, though it does kind of break in certain games. But the point is, if you combine Swiss with uh, something like the Mark II, it basically provides you 480p across the board, though I'm sure there's a few compatibility edge cases along the way as well. Yeah, that's true. I haven't really run across any of those myself, but you can find compatibility lists online for uh, certain games that, that might be broken or they might be broken in one region or something like that. I guess we should talk a little bit about the actual video quality then. Uh, both the digital HDMI and then also on the analog side. So versus the very expensive component cables, I did find that in both analog and digital uh, HDMI mode at least, uh, the image quality is improved. The image is slightly brighter. Um, it's a little bit sharper and it sort of gets around, it improves some of the video artifacts you might see because I guess one of the curious things about the GameCube is that it doesn't internally process the video in the RGB color space. It uses YCBCR instead. So technically using component cables kind of makes sense there since you're staying in that 
converting it over to like a SCART cable, actually, you're kind of converting internally from YCBCR to RGB, though I didn't really notice anything much in the way of the conversion there. But um, I think one of the things that, that you really dialed in over there, Mark, was uh, kind of, I guess they kind of look like chroma subsampling artifacts, but I'm not sure that's really the case. Yeah, I don't know what it is, and I'm in, in my own video on the subject, I'm being cautious about the wording I use. I'm being intentionally vague because I don't fully understand what's going on. But yes, especially if you look at like uh, red edges against a blue background or something like that, you will see sort of on official component cables, you'll see this sort of messiness around there and it looks kind of blocky because uh, certain colors appear to be rendered at, at half resolution or something like that. And with the HDMI output from the Mark II or any of these other digital output options that, that are coming around for GameCube, the HDMI still looks a little bit messy, but what I found to be so interesting is that on the analog output, whether you're using component or RGB, those messy color edges are, they look significantly cleaned up to me. And I, 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 I it's not going to be a noticeable jump for the average person, but for people like us that spend a lot of time looking at this stuff up close, it's, it's, it's noticeable. It's an improvement. And I'm, I'm probably going to be using it over my official component cables. Absolutely. And again, if you want analog or output, one of the best features of this is that it, if you look in the back of the unit here, there's actually, uh, it's a Wii analog output, which was also featured on the Wii U. So you can use official Nintendo component cables or the Nintendo RGB SCART cable, or really any of them, I suppose, with the uh, Mark II here. Just plug that in and you get analog output from that. And those cables are obviously going to be much, much, much cheaper. And there's tons of third-party options out there since the, the GameCube component cable from Nintendo with its special connector and the, the DAC chip in there, uh, it was never really reproduced. And that's why it's become such a rare thing. So this is the kind of, I guess, project that really opens this up in terms of like what you can do with the video output. And now we have something that I think produces better video quality than uh, a Wii playing GameCube games. And also, I guess, did you actually test a Wii U by any chance? I haven't looked at one in a while, but I recall it not looking that great. Yeah, it's, I haven't tested it for this particular uh, video. I actually don't have the, uh, Nintendo software, and I believe there's one other solution. I've never tested it for myself, but I've had uh, people in the community provide some video clips for me. And the scaling you're getting out of that is identical to how the game or the Wii U scales Wii games, which is, uh, I mean, it's acceptable enough from a distance, but it's it's not wonderful 480p scaling. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how I feel as well. So really then, you know, based on what we're seeing here, this, this final version that we've tested, uh, it does seem like this is the best version of the GC video project available yet, mainly because, so it does function like the older units, but the, the addition of analog output is huge. Like in my case, I use uh, SCART cables for my main retro setup. My PVM monitor is 480i only, uh, unfortunately. So being able to get RGB SCART out of uh, Japanese and American GameCube, which was not previously possible, is another nice bonus. So this just kind of adds a lot of options. There's even a 3.5 millimeter mini jack for um, analog audio output, as well as sort of, it's also doubles as a mini Toslink port for optical audio out. So you kind of have, you know, the HDMI analog and then, you know, analog slash digital audio all in this little unit. And it's a neat little package, but it's still 150 bucks. So it's an expensive solution. It's cheaper than the official component cables, but you kind of got to be really into the GameCube to play it. And I guess that there, there's still going to be a lot of people that are interested in the GameCube, mainly because of Smash Brothers Melee, I think, uh, especially now that it's coming out that Smash Brothers Ultimate has at least double the input latency of Smash Brothers Melee. So having an HDMI equipped GameCube with Melee is still valuable, I think, to a lot of people because you're gonna get the best experience there. But there are other options and I haven't had a chance to look at them, but I think you've been testing some of them out, haven't you? Yeah, so the video that I'm working on right now, which will hopefully be out by the second half of this week, uh, is not just about the Mark II, it's uh, about several other solutions that have come about recently, like this is the 
Carby here. It's uh, made by some people that go by Insurrection Industries. And they actually made, it is almost impossible to spot differences between this metal connector that they've made and the official. The only difference is like a little bit of this metal seam back there. Uh, and they're actually, I'm not sure if they're doing it just yet, but they're planning to actually sell the connector so that people can use it with like their own, like homemade GC video solutions since that is open source project. Uh, they designed it to be hand solderable, which you can't do with the official, uh, the design of the official cable. So it's really impressive. It feels great how it clicks in. Um, and it's $75, it's half the price of the Mark II, but the Mark II kind of gives you all the features in one box. So I, I think it depends on what your needs are. I mean, some people are gonna love that they can uh, hook up analog to their TV and then send HDMI to a capture card for their stream or something like that. Right. But Insurrection's approach is going to be more like, okay, well, people, a lot of people probably don't need both. Why don't we make a more affordable product? Uh, that lets them pick and choose uh, HDMI or analog. Right now, the only thing that's available is uh, the Carby, which is the HDMI. Uh, this product doesn't have a name yet. I've actually got uh, my hands on their component cable uh, development prototype. The um, It's going to have like molded strain relief uh, is Ooh. what they tell me in the end, but it uses uh, BNC uh, connectors, uh, which is probably going to seem weird to most people. Uh, that's not what they're used to seeing, but uh, they've kind of designed it with people in mind who might have like professional equipment like Extron uh, switch boxes or PVMs and things like that. And you can get for just like a few cents uh, RCA adapters to plug these into a, a standard RCA um, uh, input. But um, right now uh, with this, unit, uh, they're still working on the video levels, but I mean, the, the quality is amazing. The video levels need to be balanced, which is actually an issue we ran into with uh, pre-retail units on the Mark II. Uh, so, I mean, th this stuff is still being worked out, but I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful that they will get the uh, video levels on this thing matching the HDMI output and matching the official cables in the Mark II. Um, and this will be, um, I, I'm told that this is going to be more expensive to produce than an HDMI only solution actually, uh, but it, it should still be only a little bit more than the Carby. So, I mean, uh, if there, there are other, other, other options available if you are interested in just HDMI or just component. Uh, but I'm not aware of anyone making a just RGB option right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is great stuff then. It's, it's cool to see the community coming together like this to continue to create uh, solutions for retro gaming like this, especially in a case like the GameCube. Honestly, for myself, uh, I probably will switch over to using the Mark II primarily for my GameCube. It just fits what I'm doing. Um, and honestly, the only other thing I'd really like to see, and I think it's not possible with this current FPGA due to size restrictions, is the ability to at least like do some like a line 2x mode on like you get on the OSSC, where you could output at a higher resolution, and the thing is internally doubling up, allowing you to get sharper pixels. It's not an option here. You're just getting 480p, but it's very clean, nice looking 480p. And it's especially great if you're capturing, I found. It's a really nice unit for capturing. So, but honestly, you know, I think that's kind of, that kind of covers everything there. It's, it's, it's not cheap, it's 150 bucks, but it's a good solution, but it's one of many solutions. There's, so if you're kind of in the market for this kind of thing, uh, do keep an eye out and yeah, it's, it's cool stuff. So I think it's gonna bring us to the end of this little sort of conversational piece on the GameCube. The GameCube is still awesome. It's still a great system, kind of underrated, I think. And uh, yeah, this is definitely something worth checking out, so give it a look. But I think, uh, Mark, why don't you tell us where we can find you and give us a little more details about uh, your upcoming video real quick. Yeah, so the My Life and Gaming channel is just youtube.com slash mylifeandgaming. We do lots of uh, tech overviews and stuff like that. And we've been working for a while on making sort of a, a general GameCube video quality update uh, that's going to feature 
the Carby and the Mark II, and it's going to feature a little bit of the uh, insurrection uh, component cable, the state that it's in right now anyway. Uh, GameCube video has kind of been a moving target, uh, even in just the past couple of weeks and months. Uh, so it's, it's been one of the most difficult videos I've had for getting the information compiled correctly. Uh, and I'm sure there will be further changes, but it seems like the situation is somewhat stable now. It's, it's in a state where people are like, okay, I think I want to get a Mark II, or okay, I think I want to get a Carby, or maybe I should wait for this component-only solution. But I think it, the market right now is kind of complemented very well. You've got everything in one box for $150, or you've got pick and choose for roughly half the cost. And uh, a lot of that's kind of going to be the focus of that video that I'm hoping will be out uh, by the second half of this week. So it's, uh, it's going to be cool. Cool. Well, we look forward to checking that out. And as for the people watching this little video, thanks for watching. And, you know, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell up there, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, stay retro.